It's good to be with you this morning on this uh, uh, September 15th uh, town hall update uh, on COVID and other uh, very important and vital information. Um, today we do have a um, um, hopefully a compressed schedule uh, on our um, presentations. Uh, a lot of things going on, uh, food distribution uh, out and abroad, uh, a funeral service for one of our fallen veterans. Uh, servicemen. So uh, lots to do. Uh, let's get started real quick as we go to our creator in, in prayer. Shat Dian God. Volney God, we give you thanks and praise for another day. Lord, we ask Father for you to be with us. Lord, in this town hall, Father, as we update the, the people across the land, Father, across the world, Lord, many are watching. May you uh, find them and bless the health, Lord. Uh, Lord, uh, you know, we know many are struggling at this time, Father. We Come alongside them in prayer, Father. I pray for them for healing, for provision, Lord, for protection, Lord. And uh, Lord, you would would withhold no good thing from them, Father. Lord, as you uh, uh, get the preeminence that you deserve, Father, from the people of the land, Lord, Father, we pray and uh, beseech heaven, Father, with uh, prayers for uh, safety and for healing, Lord, for all the people, Lord, as this this virus, Lord, is, uh, has wreaked havoc, Father, and we pray that you would suppress it, Lord, and bring healing to the nation as you heal the land, Father. Lord, let our people uh, truly recognize you, Father, as preeminent, as the creator. Let knows all things, Father. You knew us before we were born. You knew us in our mother's womb, Lord, Father. You know the number of the hairs on our head, Lord, Father. That's how great your love is for your creation, Lord. We thank you again. We ask you to be with us, Lord. We pray for your your wisdom, Lord Father, and that we're able as leaders, Father, to ex uh, humbly receive this, Lord Father, be empowered and be motivated and compelled, Lord, to act for the people. In Jesus' name, we pray, and God, we give you praise. Amen and amen. So this morning, we thank you again for joining us on this town hall update. And uh, without further ado, uh, the president of the Navajo Nation, uh, Jonathan Nez, uh, as he gives uh, vital updates for us. So Mr. President, take it away. Thank you, uh, Vice President, and um, thank you for the prayer. Uh, and <laughs> Vice President Myron Leiser. Aro di the question Sagina has the eight at the Nahaisni Gito de Quila, but that all not she wins. Aro de Quila and Daska to test it up the Dilia Gido, Ecodo Banda Huilne. A Dean Daska Gia. Tested up the Diliagi to Hosen Tragina has eight as eight arts at the Dinas Nagi, but that all not Sashi, but that all not Aya are taught up the double don't need a conda jot the Zebat. A co nast a nast at Dean Doba are nast a the Meliage Doba art Sebi Nesna Dean Doba are nast a Ashla. An elt out a con das car, lazel ego a tessa da bedelia. 
Ako, di na snegi, but that old nagi a nast a the meal yaja doba a nast a and there's nothing doba a tsepi tsepitin doba a naki a connelt a comp with that old naconde such a yit teach it ask yard and a sling so sit the meal yaja doba a asla and there's a thing of a hastanting doba a asla and elder a com a yard and a sling a conde di psado a dajit denigia nik any hidna nij dust the toy nihin dust but so the ills and ash one a con aid and lenigi the aid and lenigi la the cousin scary with sado or dajit denigi a ya a slaneza tindom a tindom a stra and elta a con and he can hit an sado or dajit denigi but so the ills and donate. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, update uh, 99,895 uh, tests have been completed. And that's over 45% of our total population being tested. Um, since the start of the pandemic, uh, 9,982 have been tested. And 7,181 of those have recovered and uh 536 of our loved ones our relatives our family and our navajo people have lost their lives to um covid 19. our thoughts and prayers go out to them all and let's continue to uh pray for them and uh you know comfort them in this time uh, there are many people that are watching today that get this update. We do this Tuesdays at 10 a.m., Thursdays at 6 p.m. So Thursdays, we're, Thursday, we're going to talk a little bit about the legislation that's going before the council, uh, the remaining $177 million. Uh, I'll talk about the breakdown uh, of how much these um, dollars have been allocated. And if you are able to, since you're watching Facebook Live, you are able to go back to our Facebook account and look at our previous town halls. I've given an update, I'd say about maybe four or five town hall meetings of how to break down. It'll take, it does take some time to go through the allocation. So if you wanna know that, check that out. But uh, on Thursday at 6 p.m. we'll go through that. But I, I just wanna let you know that uh, remaining 177 million that is left from the CARES Act. We, we want that money to go directly to um, relief of our people. I, I've seen a lot of people that are struggling, people emailing us, letting them know that they're falling behind on their bills, they need some uh, food and some necessities to prepare them for the winter, right? That's why um, we're getting ready um, during the Saturday reopening of the curfew is to get ready, not to travel, but just to get ready for the winter. And we're proposing many of these dollars uh, to go to Navajo citizens that are struggling. Not everybody's struggling, right? Some people have gotten paid. Some people were getting paid throughout the six months. And so I just ask respectfully, you know, um, those that are really in dire need of help, um, to to support but there's that legislation it's 0209-20 and uh, eli or jared if you could put that link on the comments and let the people know that you can support this legislation to get direct aid um, it's for our elders, our people that are struggling, even our college students, even our Head Start students, our students that are now at home. You know, BIE just uh, mentioned to us uh, a few days ago that they're going to stay online for the first quarter. So that's good news to everybody. You know, we were going based on the survey that was given to the parents and the teachers and the parents and the teacher overwhelmingly said that we want to stay online for this uh semester but BIE uh, acknowledged that the first quarter which would end close to uh, Thanksgiving but we'll reevaluate that at that time the numbers continue to go down and stay down 
you know, maybe there is an opportunity to gradually uh, open many of our businesses and schools back up just for those that want it, you know, hybrid system. And those that want to stay home, you know, that, that should be allowed as well. I know daycare is always uh, a big concern. You know, people are going back to work and children, especially the younger children, uh, don't have anybody to um, uh, take care of them or even help them during the uh, transition into online courses. So we're, we, know, we understand that. Uh, and so we are moving towards uh, uh, reopening gradually. We're Navajo Nation government reopened a few weeks ago. And so far we haven't seen um, or heard, uh, you know, thank God, uh, no uh, cases, big cases coming out of Navajo Nation employee offices because they're some of them are staying home. They're online work. Some of them were not. They're in the offices and they're being rotated uh, as well. So we'll be talking about more of that on Tuesday with the, uh, the CARES Act funding. Um, and so we're, we're doing our very best, you know, we're, um, I know everybody's concerned. You got one group over here saying, hey man, we're ready to go back into normal life. There's really people saying that when there's gonna be no more normal until there's a vaccine. And, and that might take years. So this is the new normal. Ladies and gentlemen, I hate to break it to you like that, but this may be the new normal. And we got to get used to, you know, really taking care of ourselves um, throughout the Navajo Nation. Um, so 536 people have uh, lost their lives to the virus. Uh, you know, let's continue to pray for them. There are recoveries, 7,181 recoveries now uh, to date from the start and to to yesterday, yesterday evening. And it's starting to fluctuate, right? In 24 hours yesterday, we had um, only five positive cases and no new deaths. You know, a few days ago, we had zero all-time low. But, you know, there's no cure. There's no vaccine. So these fluctuations are going to be um, happening here on the Navajo Nation without uh, a vaccine. And so let me go to the, the PowerPoint. Um, Eli, Eli Leslie is the person who's been putting our town halls on and helping us uh, do this um, type of uh, video conference town hall. Um, and we appreciate his work. It takes a lot of time to do these things and make it look the way it looks right now. Very professional. Thank you, Eli. So if you look at the chart there, you see the curve. And from March, you know, early March is when the virus started here on Navajo. And it started to go up on an upward trend. And right about early May is when we hit the peak and you can see the peak there at the top of the mountain as they call it and then as you see the the, the the decrease well you can see some bumps on the way down right see those bumps um those little flattening and little um increases are from the holidays you can see the end of may which is late uh, memorial day weekend right you see an increase there because of the traveling people are doing. And then there's just this big decrease. And then you come around June, in a June, and then also July 4th weekend. There was the, um, uh, the weekend Navajo Nation holiday that contributed to a spike. And as you go down all the way into September, there was a little spike um, a couple weeks ago. And we are anticipating, uh, I'm hoping just a little spike for Labor Day weekend. That's why we didn't um, go from orange to yellow. See, there are four color codes, red, orange, yellow, green. So when we reopened the Navajo Nation, we reopened in orange status. 25% occupancy in offices. 
and uh, facilities, businesses. If you get to yellow, it's 50% occupancy. And then green, you know, it's looking okay, looking good. So we saw the downward trend. We were going to go into yellow status, but we just saw so many of our people um, out on Labor Day weekend. And that was a concern to all of us. So that is the reason why we did not um, go into yellow status. We're going to wait. It takes about a week, week and a half to see the numbers. So week and a half, week to week and a half from now, or from this past weekend, we will see the numbers for the Labor Day weekend. If you go to the next PowerPoint that shows us overall throughout the country and the hot spots or the uh, states that have the most uh, cases uh, in the COVID-19 rate in the last seven days. And you can see there that North Dakota is the highest in the country now. And if you go, if you look down the first red line, I know it's hard to see on the PowerPoint, but the first red line midway through this chart, that's Utah. And Utah has been increasing a lot lately because of the schools that are opening. And it really started with the Salt Lake City area, but now it's starting to move south into this, the, the closer towards the northern, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, the northern part of the Navajo Nation, uh, Utah Navajo portion. So Utah Navajos are now really um, be on your toes, wear your mask, social distance, um, wash your hands. <clears throat> and then the next one down, the red one, the second red one down is Arizona. And still concerning. Um, and we still need to stay diligent there. And um, when we uh, have our relatives coming back home from uh, other parts of the uh, state of Arizona, the yellow there is Navajo Nation. You know, we were way at the top, right? And because of the hard work that you all are doing, you have got down below Arizona now. Congratulations. Uh, but don't let down. Continue to do what you're doing in fighting this uh, virus. The next one after the Navajo Nation is Colorado. Colorado is lower. And then the next one, the last red there is New Mexico. So the, the red um, colored graphs there are the four corners, the states that are surround us. So I wanted to give you a glimpse of that. And then the next slide there, <clears throat> we've been showing you this on a periodic basis. And you can see the, the, the red. See, this is throughout the country. They have a little different. They have the dark red, the milder red, the yellow, and the green. See, ours is a little bit different. Ours is red, orange, yellow, and green. Pretty much, you know, the same. Um, it's, the, it's the same type of uh, criteria. But if you look at uh, the states that mandate people to wear masks, they're all yellow, right? Colorado is yellow. You see that little mask icon? They mandate people to wear masks in New Mexico, same thing, Navajo Nation. So those three states are in yellow status. Um, they're okay. These are using the uh, national guidelines. We have our different guidelines. We're still in orange here. Don't think we're in yellow. But based on comparing all of us to 50 states, we use the U.S. criteria here. And that's what is shown here. Arizona is lighter red, right? So in, in, in our gating criteria or our color code, that would mean it's orange. Um, and then red, Utah, you can see the big increase. And you can see the trend in cases of the last 30 days, that middle column shows you the curve. And if you look at Utah, you could see it go down and then just really increase significantly. And there is a 
a downward trend. So I wanted to let you all know how we are, com how we're comparing ourselves with other states. So the next uh, slide, we are uh, still in Navajo Nation, 32 hour weekend lockdown, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, the whole month of September, the whole month of September, we are in lockdown status, 32 hours at starting Saturday uh, at 9 p.m. all the way to Monday at 5 a.m. And, um, you know, there are people that are saying, well, when are we going to get our Sundays back? You know, um, really Sundays was for, for families, you know, family day. And what better way to have a family day than staying at home, right? And uh, I know churches are wanting to get back um, into the churches, but they're still all across the country. No face-to-face -face gatherings. I know some people are saying and pushing back, saying, well, they're taking our religious freedoms away. We're not. You know, you still can do drive-up services, and we encourage that. And you can do it on Saturday. And, uh, you know, if I Correct me if I'm wrong, Vice President, but I think the true Sabbath is on a Saturday um, when it comes to, you know, the gathering of the, the, the church is the gathering of the people, not actually a physical building as well. So we encourage you to meet uh, on those days that don't have curfew. You are correct, sir. The Sabbath is Saturday. Thank you, Vice President. Uh, and, and so we encourage you to, uh, and I see churches meeting on, on Saturdays as well. So um, we're just doing everything to keep everybody safe. You know, I know that there's a bait, that there's a debate between science and faith, you know, and of course that's going to always be ongoing. But for us, the public health professionals have been guiding us on these types of criteria, and ceremonies are also being um, conducted in a safe way, which is uh, you know doable as long as the person that's doing it, either the pastor or the medicine man, follows the the criteria of the CDC. And so we, we ask you to keep that in mind, no more than five people in a, in a confined place, um, drive ups for, for churches, uh, gatherings, you know, six feet social distancing. Um, and so we're encouraging uh, that and we'll reevaluate that uh, come a couple of weeks uh, for the month of October. I know people are asking, hey, are you going to clamp down on Halloween? Uh, what do you all think, ladies and gentlemen? Halloween, people are touching candy, people are gathering uh, with uh, others and close interaction. So, you know, those are things that we have to consider. And then I'll go, and people are saying, "Well, you're taking away our, our, our fun time, right? This is a serious outbreak. This is a serious pandemic. Now you want to sacrifice your health and well-being for candy, um, one night of indulgence of some." food that might not be healthy for you as well you know those are things that we need to factor as well and so we we just want everybody to be safe that's the bottom line i mean look at what happened at the beginning of the virus how quick it spread same thing could happen again and we don't want that to happen ladies and gentlemen so today we're going to be uh in Rock Point at one, Round Rock at three, and Luca Jigge at five, with the U.S. Census, and also handing out voter information from the counties to everybody. You know, early voting sites, drop bo ballot boxes. Those of you that have your ballots that got them mailed to you, you know, we're trying to get um, drop off uh, boxes so you can get it back to your. Um, uh, county seats in time. 
So at one o'clock, Rock Point, three o'clock, Around Rock, five o'clock, we've got your care package distribution um, and the census. You know, we had a good turnout on the census, a big turnout. I'd say over a thousand on Saturday at the Fire Rock Casino parking lot. This, this Saturday, we'll be out in uh, Northern Edge. They were saying flowing water, but based on what we went through this past Saturday, um, we decided to use the bigger parking lot. Uh, and it'll be at Northern Edge Casino in uh, Fruitland, Upper Fruitland. And then uh, the census, if you can get the census, respond to the census, 2020 census, ladies and gentlemen. We ask you, we plead with you, we only have uh, 15 days, 15 days before the end of the, uh, of the deadline for getting census. We're doing great. You all are doing great. You see that we are at now at 19.5%. Fort Defiance, you are leading at 23%. So good job everybody in fort defiance agency chinley agency will be out there tomorrow um we'll get that schedule out this this evening uh 16.2 percent chinley uh you're you're uh way behind on all the agencies but we can catch up right chinley uh western agency 19.1 percent uh eastern agency 20 percent see we were out in eastern I know a lot of people are saying, why are you on Eastern? Then when you're in Arizona, that Eastern will say, why aren't you in, Ara in Eastern? You know, sometimes can't make everybody happen. We're trying to reach everybody as we can. But when we were out in Eastern, the statistic went up and we're at 20%. Northern Agency as well, 19.4%. So that's the census. And uh, Eli, if you could put that uh, PowerPoint that says respond to the 2020 census. Um, that's the website to get on. It only takes five minutes. I mean, if you're at a food distribution, we had a lot of people that came in and self-responded uh, less than five minutes. They, they just drove up, person there with their mask, their PPE, got their information. There was, uh, of course, into a wireless, wireless, thank you for being out there and um, providing high-speed internet for our census workers and they punched it in for them and it went back to census and it was that quick uh and then the uh in conclusion uh, well let me go back to navajo um <coughs> Clorox in the dot taggy than date yeah the uh it's not be yeah uh uh it's uh the no the no send all the clean that in the game they gonna be a daily a auto core in he ka each it um world central kitchen to a piece of daily washington that person here to that on that a con peso de chocodelia, a hot an hada yila. Ado a con de ni. Ado a ben nachin de ni coya. De con halchin de neda yostra gia. Nahada de le. Census bana alte. De quishi a la hot a na hija. Ashton a da sado naha. Ah, he did the la de halchin. So DJ Yanli, um, uh, Rock Point, Rock Point, they are sour to so on the credole. Ado Taol Kiso, a Kaji round rock. Slaul Kiso, a Lukaji Kaja, a Ajad Ade, and they need to let the Dai Nisigido, Sanal Sustabukagi, Edo, and they need. Let's say, uh, um dai nisigi bahanegi ado sashie kon um le county dan the early vote day nisigi ya e de le to le so e bahanegi so na so sta bakha do le jo dai ni so shi a alla dai ni sto le sashie a kadesh da da nisigi na ho ti do le even na che kon al so sta ni 
Shkido Shunna. Ash Horn in the Hadda Bedle. The US census to Aja Aben Nachiko, Besson Yunin, he took a bed, Aya. A the Quilla de Nat and Elt Egiben Nachin, she could a Beso Giani, the Aja A. So there's nothing over on the deeds at the meat so on Elta. What are Besson Yitta to that? Eighty Nashnegi, uh, Binia, Joy Nashnegi, a Aja Besa, Bani Nel Aden, uh, Bucado, Luas, no Besa, Bija, Ilia, Nijakulia. So a cold best a cheat or put a Nascado, Nishti, Internet or telephone that Agida, John Dal Nesto, Lesha, no, Ado Dido, um, Giando, uh, Betlin dal inigido e e da un dasil ni o konde ni to a a alla jo ba na hashne a kuich ko de jenda na shun na shi e a a jo ni hiche a shana na na shleto le di beso cho e di kia shkiro shne so he to ni hiche ni do le to hada inoshne alla hne a di che kudoshi arben ni hiche a shana e le to le liu senses a ro doctor Fowler do ni hiche a zi e kuje a da anneshje wa an hi washington jin khal chna ajin da anneshgi jo ek adi tha da za di da za mo is leo analia so e ko ta e ya konal so se nas ko de shlita no senegi e ka yin de yin da na shota ado it's is pa ya je to dr jill jim she di ko an khal chna aji ego bna ne shit ek senegi di na shlin de kha gi shin hi ja shana na 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 leta le shikiro shna ara shna do a vice president bna ne shit ek senegi do myron lizer ishin ko do ya ya khun il na do le shna so ben sht es do le edo so i i just wanted to conclude by saying that <clears throat> next monday uh we're going to have a discussion a live town hall meeting with dr anthony fauci and he's uh the leading expert uh here in the country um regarding covid-19 and what's happening throughout the country you know what are the latest uh, trends what what is happening with the vaccines you know and a lot of information will be gathered i know a lot of people will be watching during that time so i encourage you all to tune in on monday september 21st 9 a.m. our time, uh, 8 a.m. Arizona time for this town hall meeting. Um, you know, one of the things that that a lot of people are looking at the Navajo Nation, right? I know there's a lot of comments about guinea pigs using us as guinea pigs, and people saying that why are you allowing this to happen? You know, throughout this country, there have been many viruses that have plagued us as human beings and there have been people who have utilized their own bodies to find cures for these types of viruses so before you start commenting negativity i bet all of us that are on this town hall meeting have been vaccinated for mumps, measles, and rubella, MMR as they call it when we're kids. Someone had to do clinical trials for that at that time. And now we don't have measles, we don't have mumps, and other illnesses that people sacrifice their own health to test those out. Now we're not forcing people to do it. It's voluntarily, voluntarily. And if you don't want to do it, then don't comment. Just don't take it. But there are others out there that see a common good in this, because all human beings are not alike. And you know we have a flu shot. How many of you that are complaining about these vaccination? Are going to get getting a flu shot this year, right? Right. Someone had to test those flu shots, and even with the flu shots, I understand that it's fifty percent 
some it doesn't work for people. So that's an ongoing uh, test on vaccinations. And so if people, Navajo people, want to volunteer uh, to try these vaccination clinical trials for COVID-19, then I, I don't think we should stand in the way. There are thousands of people that are signing up for clinical trials so that people don't have to go through this virus. And those that have gone through this virus know it's not a fun experience. And so before you judge on vaccination clinical trials, look at what we've gone through. Again, we all got vaccinated for measles, mumps, and rubella. We also voluntarily take flu shots every year, those that choose. And nobody forces you to do it. And the same thing here. Nobody is forcing you to take this vaccination trial of COVID-19, Pfizer study. And this virus has really hit us hard here on Navajo. And people are looking at us. Maybe nobody will sign up. I know there is concern throughout the country, throughout the world, that people don't want to do this, these trials, which is okay. It's going to be an ongoing uh, testing. But if this virus doesn't go away, at some point, some many of us are going to say, well, whenever this vaccination gets, if you want to call it perfected, then we're going to be asking for these injections so that we get vaccinated in the future. If we want some, go, or let me rephrase that. If we want to go back to some normal normalcy, then this virus has to go away and it's not going to go away on its own. And I think if we're not going to take vaccines, then you probably need to start getting used to wearing a mask social distancing, washing your hands, and staying home. Because that's the only way you're not going to get this virus if you don't take a vaccine. So look at the bigger picture before you comment and look at things through just one lens or, or even people saying it's the mark of the beast and saying that, oh, man, you know, all these conspiracy theories that are out there, who knows? But if we're going to get back to everyday life, there's going to have to be some testing that's going to have to occur. And here on Navajo, too. Or we just stay here on the Navajo Nation and, you know, don't let anybody in and don't let anybody out. Maybe that's another way to keep this virus off the nation as well. There's no one's going to support something like that. No way. And especially our relatives that live off the Navajo Nation. So really think about it and pray about it as well. And that's what we're doing here as well. We're praying about it. Uh, and you have that choice. You have that choice, ladies and gentlemen. So listen, and on Monday, you'll get a, a, a different perspective of what's going on, a bigger update, a better update, really, what's happening throughout the world. So ladies and gentlemen, take care of yourself. You're doing such an awesome job. Continue to wear your mask, social distance, uh, stay home and wash your hands with soap and water, use hand sanitizer. And lastly, our thoughts and prayers go out to the families of Army Private First Class Carlton Chi and U.S. Army Specialist Miguel Yazi. Today, the Navajo Nation mourns with the family and also our flags are half staffed throughout the Navajo Nation in remembrance of these two warriors who put their, their um, themselves on the line for our freedoms. 
and we don't condone what's happening there at the Fort Hood Army Base in terms of keeping information from families, our Navajo families and the 26 other families who lost loved ones there at Fort Hood Army Base. We just pray for, for them. We pray for the families. We just want answers for our families that lost loved ones there at the base. Today is Private First Class Carlton Cheese Funeral. It's a graveside service there at the Gallup Veterans Memorial Park. And our again, our thoughts and prayers go out to the family. Let's continue to pray for our nation, continue to pray for our men and women in uniform and our gold star mothers, blue star families, gold star families, blue star families. And, uh, you know, this Sunday is supposed to be gold star families um, recognition, but there'll be events happening here on Navajo on Saturday and listen out for that as well. So we, we also acknowledge our gold star mothers who lost their son or daughter in the military. Thank you so much. God bless you. God bless our great Navajo Nation. I'll turn the time over to our Vice President, Myron Leiser. Take care, everybody. Yeah, thank you, Mr. President. Thank you for your leadership. And uh, <clears throat> we've always said that uh, leaders, leaders make hard decisions, uh, tough decisions. So appreciate our president's leadership in this uh, pandemic. Who would have thought, you know, coming into this administration that we would be having to deal with um, what we're dealing with. And so uh, for such a time as this year, uh, we do appreciate those that do support uh, you know, us with prayer and as, as rightfully so and, and you know, needed uh, as leaders of the nation, not only uh, Office of the President and Vice President, but also our 24th Napa Nation Council and our Department of Justice. You know, we are all in this together. Uh, you know, we just, um, as the leaders are kind of on the forefront, uh, on the uh, tips of everybody's minds, whether it's uh, positive or negative, right? And so, um, I myself, I, I look for the positive post and uh, I know President does and does a very good job. He's adept at remaining positive and remaining cool and calm and collective. And so uh, that's where we find ourselves. So right now, presently during this uh, September 15th, uh, COVID-19 town hall update. And so it, uh, it uh, behooves us, right, to uh, continue to get out the information uh, some, you know, of uh, the data and then interpretation does receive uh, pushback and uh, negative comments. But, uh, you know, for the most part, you all are, are, are very, uh, um, um, you know, uh, positive and, and prayerful and considering all things. And uh, as he, we always say, uh, a lot of cliches, they, they take preeminence in these times. You know, we're all in this together. Wear your mask, right? We all become a debt at the um, knowledge that we have now and the terms that are being used, social distancing, you know, pandemic, COVID-19, virus, um, immunity, vaccines, vaccine trials, you know, leaders, uh, they, again, they, um, uh, because of uh, their openness and their ability to work with uh, uh, other leaders and, you know, uh, see uh, opportunities for options, uh, I just want to say, you know, that, that the Navajo Nation is is in a place right now to have options. It, isn't it just great to be a part of that conversation, to be a part of uh, a, an opportunity to discuss vaccines, to be in that discussion? Um, I, I, I don't know, you know, I'm, I'm kind of a new kid on the block here, uh, not a, a politician, nor have I ever been in, um, you know, uh, the political arena, but you know, just from my looking back, you know, uh, have, uh, you know, have we ever uh, been a part of, uh, of um, I guess, uh, initial talks of uh, vaccines? It's always been on the backside, you know, kind of migrate slowly to Indian country. And here we are with the ability to 
advocate and talk about uh, firsthand trials and, you know, whether it's phase one, phase two, phase three, uh, all those things. I, I really don't understand that, but, you know, I do uh, trust and, and he, as president does to the words of our health professionals and our epi team, those that are trained, highly trained, you know, to be able to uh, advocate for not only us and, and our people, it's just that leadership they they kind of on the forefront of all this here and 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 rightfully so so you know uh we will uh uh i'm just thankful that we have the opportunity as from the office of the president vice president and i, and I can't speak for the our 24th navajo nation council but you know i i know as leaders we we do look uh and depend on this timely uh, uh data and and knowledge from our um our those that are <laughs> smarter than us right i mean president and i have said you know if we don't know the answers we know somebody else who does and we can uh, you know uh trust them to help us arrive at the right conclusion along with our prayers i think yeah, that's the first uh uh important part you know i was i was writing my notes here and i usually have to go and be flexible with what president says because a lot of times uh, he says things that that i i would say and so i have to uh be flexible and tweak my message into what you uh need to hear uh Shidane, all along the the uh facebook live here but you know one of the things that i was talking in my notes is just options you know it's just great to have options where rather than just have you know something and just one way that is the way, right? Uh, one way that that um, you know things will be done. So to have options, vaccines, um, you know, immunity from COVID nineteen. It's nice to even be a part of this discussion. I was writing. The eyes of the world are on the Navajo Nation. You know, next week's uh, town hall with Dr. Fauci. I mean, yeah, don't you think um, we're probably going to have uh, definitely more than three hundred and thirty four people on? We might have. You know, a couple thousand, maybe uh, 10, 20,000 people watching Facebook Live with Dr. Fauci. So uh, it'll be a great time to learn. It'll be a great part to, uh, you know, uh, try to see what our options could be uh, going into this. Uh, as president's right, you know, with, without um, immunity, we'll have to live, continue living our lives with masks and uh, not being able to go many places to press in our, our, our life and our livelihoods. And so, you know, who wants to be? Uh, suppressed and that's what the whole battle has been about suppression you know everybody thinking governments uh, overstepping their bounds and <laughs> uh, uh, we just want to keep our people safe you know and so uh, whether it's uh, you know being politically correct or any of that you know really it's just been uh, judging life on one hand balancing opportunity on the other and so you balance those so as leaders you know we don't shy away from that we you know it's it's our our, uh, our, our our authority under our authority to make those calls and uh, so we appreciate our president and uh, where we are presently you know much has been said to maybe create division you know talking about the two uh, he's democrat i'm republican but yet you know somewhere we arrive in the middle by prayer and by your support and by your prayers and also uh the, the guidance of our own cabinet right uh their safety in the council of many you know, we uh, we don't respond. We don't, uh, um, you know, um, put it out there for all the world to see. You know, I mean, sure, we have our own opinions. We have our own thoughts. But as we lead a nation, we weigh those with the input from many. And we, we go and we prayerfully consider. And so I just want to put that out there for encouragement of you all. You know, uh, you also have the option to pray or not to pray to be a part of the solution or not be a part of the solution, right? And so, you know, the, that that's just kind of how it is. The, the freest country in the land, in the world, right? And we're part of it, the most blessed nation that our Creator has set because we're founded on godly principles, biblical principles that keep us in line. And when those go astray, then, you know, there's going to be bumps, there's going to be bruises, there's going to be strife and the vision and so it's, it's about getting back to that point and the only way we can is by lifting up our creator lifting up you know uh our prayers to uh the one who can save us you know i'm not worried about what man says you know obviously there's been a lot said and i care about what my creator says you know the plan he's given me the plan to be the vice president right now is really what's on my mind and the leadership that needs to come from this office right now opvp it's all i care about
you know, we'll continue to pray for his guidance and his power and his provision and his protection. And so, and then that's what you get from two men here, uh, President Jonathan Nez and Vice President Weiser. <clears throat> There's two men for such a time as this that rely on our Creator God uh, more than our own ability. And so, yeah, be that as it may, isn't it great shouldn't to have options? Again, you can join us or you can uh, be against us, but we don't want you to be against us because we're leading you. And so how can a, you know, a, a house stand if it's divided? So, you know, anyway, you need to chew these things. And then, then opportunities. You know, we have options for op op opportunities. You know, we can continue um, to you know, monitor all those options that are out there uh, for businesses, acquiring businesses, not acquiring them. You know, I mean, that's just another uh, can of worms there, another discussion. But here in the office of the president, vice president, we have those discussions. You know, we talk about things. Uh, we just recently met with our, um, had our inaugural meeting last week from our, our, with our um, Navajo Economic um, Recovery Workforce. You see, ours is a community. Uh, I'm sorry, ours is a um, uh, economy that is uh, is very uh, almost considered to be in its infant stage, right? I mean, for 30, 40 years, we've had seen not much progress, but now we're positioned, I believe, because of CARES, because of uh, adding infrastructure, we can provision a plan for the future. And that's what we're doing. We're working with our 24th Navajo Nation Council. But along the lines, you got to also bring aid to those people that are hurting right now. That's what leaders do. And so, you know, President talked about the $177 million that we provision by that legislation to uh, bring uh, aid and to bring comfort, uh, to bring, you know, um, uh, I guess relief in its, in its uh, financial form to our people who are, who are struggling. Some, you know, are wondering how they're going to make payments. Some are six months. Uh, we've heard, President, and, and, and I'm sure... Um, the, some of our staff, we hear from our constituents, the citizens of our land. They haven't made payments on their modular home. They haven't made payments on their house for five months, six months, and they're in danger of losing. And you know, that's where our people are, if you really come to think about it. You know, we need to look for solutions and uh, leave no stone unturned. And so as we consider economic uh, uh, opportunities that are out there, we need to really look at those and mine those. And so uh, this uh, economic recovery work group that met last week, we'll be, we're overseeing our reopening of our non-essential businesses right now, right? The, the um, COVID-19 pandemic has uh, really curtailed our tourism you know, to the point where council legislated visitors not coming on our land, but we still see them. You look around, drive around, you see the RVs coming. People are still intrigued by Navajo, some even knowing that we had a big, uh, you know, COVID uh, outbreak here. And yet they come, they're still intrigued. They want to see Navajo, um, you know, and so we, we need the control. We mitigate again. We're, we're balancing life and opportunities. And so, we know business owners, though, especially those tourism operators, you know, right now they're just saying, I need to put food on my table. I need to pay my bills. And this pandemic is very limiting. <clears throat> and so the options we have to provide relief, we're going to take them. We're going to bring that relief to them. We're going to help them. And we're going to look for it other opportunities to bring economic development to our people. And as we look at every opportunity, you know, we want to make it uh, business friendly. And uh, we've had discussions with some world, world changers uh, all across the land, uh, some financial uh, developers, institutions. And because the eyes of the world are on the Navajo Nation, they're calling, they're saying, how can we help? How can we assist? And, and get, I get it. I'm not, I'm not naive. You know, they want to help the nation spend the money, you know, seven or 14 million, but they also uh, are showing that they have a uh, empathetic uh, heart and mind. You know, they just want to come alongside and see how they can be of service. And so when you have this melting pot of curiosity and, and empathy and uh, care and love, man, you got to look at every opportunity and the opportunities are many. And so, we're mining through those right now. We're vetting some. And what I've seen, and, and we've heard it too, Shadina, you know, uh, in this administration, we've talked about, along with our cabinet, the one-stop shop. 
And uh, it, it means just that one stop shop. It wouldn't be great if there was just a, a place to go or a method or a vehicle that helped us go from where we are now to where we want to go. You know, those that have vision, we see, uh, you know, economic development here. We see uh, broadband brought to all corners, all the dark areas of Navajo right now, you know, power, water. I mean, we've had those discussions. Guess what? <laughs> They've also had those discussions one, two, three, four, five, ten administrations ago. And we continue to have those discussions. It is hard to do. Uh, bring change to Navajo. And um, this is the administration, I believe, that's been set in this time to to bring great change, to transform government, to transform old ways of thinking, to bring economic development to the nation. Not because I'm a business leader, but just because that we were prayerful. And who would have prayed for the opportunities that this COVID-19 pandemic brought to us? Man, you know, be that as it may, you know, again, the world's the eyes of the world are on us. So what can we fashion with this? Well, you we talk to the likes of the, the leading uh, immunity uh, doctor out there, right? Uh, Dr. Fauci, the president, he brings him on board and we start talking about vaccines and cures for the Navajo Nation. Front and center, real time, real talk as well. You know, to have those opportunities. Well, I'm grateful to have the opportunities to have $714 million. Well, I'm grateful. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. But um, what we do with it is another thing. And so, again, uh, as constructively and as positively as we can, we can turn the tide along with the help of our cabinet, along with our 24th Navajo Nation Council. <clears throat> At least for now, in my eyes, and I know President has uh, so many things that he's uh, got to consider, you know, and I see Arvin Trujillo is chomping at the bit to give you some information, vital information, to get every Navajo counted. And then that's his plan, and that's his calling. Well, it, it's, it's, it's my calling as a Vice President to, to look at economic opportunities and, and to, uh, to, to uh, mine these and to vet and to be, uh, you know, uh, flexible in working with those. So one stop shop to me means a growth fund of a sort that the nation has considered in the past. And so we've had those talks to, to bring a, a growth fund here, a true growth fund, just totally uh, uh, given itself to economic development. You know, taking government out and, and business minds in, uh, uh, great strong minds right off of Wall Street, right off the world's uh, uh, financial centers uh, brought to Navajo Nation to help and guide and to, uh, you know, uh, vet these opportunities. Because, you know, gone are the, the Remingtons of the, the world of opportunity. Gone are the Washington football team minority ownership opportunity. But guess what? There's many more opportunities. And we've had those discussions. Some of you have known we've talked and we continue to talk. On us, and I, I'm not even um, going off my notes anymore. I'm, I'm just talking from some of the things that we're talking about right now. Is the leaders of the Navajo Nation, President um, Jonathan Nez and Vice President Myron Lizer, that for such a time as this year, we as leaders are able to uh, elevate um, uh, different aspects that are needed to have options for you all, to have options for the benefit of our people. And I'm sure there's naysayers and detractors, but but guess what? Uh, as as the leaders here, we've been set here by Creator for such a time as this to be empowered and to have the authority to go and guide and be directed by our Creator to look at different things and to have opportunities or favor given to our people all across. So I would enlist you all to be prayerful for that favor. What does that mean for? your household what does that favor mean for for the opportunities that we have and not only in our households but in our communities and all across our land the opportunities we have right now in this present time and so we'll continue to work on those uh, that one-stop shop or growth fund concept as i say i think you know now's the time this is our time and so what can we do you know, we said it, and I'll, I'll close with this here, that we are all consumers, right? We're all consumers here on Navajo. It's just that we're consuming 
in, in the places that, that, you know, don't help us create value for our children and our children's children. And uh, we need to change and tweak our thinking. You know, let's let's change, make more the bulk of our purchases here on the Apple. Any tax revenue generated there goes to our coffers, and we create more opportunity for again our children and their children. Um, you know, let's leave that legacy. You know, for them, right? I mean, you, you really think about it. That's what we do when we decide to go off to some other locale to purchase, to make purchases. And I get it. We don't have grocery store, we don't have many grocery stores, we don't have furniture stores, we don't have clothing stores, we don't have sporting goods, we don't have, you know, all the things that we go to other places to buy, we don't have those, but guess what, it's my vision, it's my vision to bring those opportunities to you, and it's President's vision to do the same, to bring jobs, to bring revenue to the nation where we're losing it. I don't know. We, we've had so many closures, so many job losses, but yet we're still, you know, almost uh, uh, it hasn't been a drastic drop, right? But it will be if we continue to not see much uh, uh, advancement of these initiatives. It will continue. It will hurt us in the near future if we don't make changes now. And I'm the first to let you know changes are tough, you know, coming to the nation to leave my business is and to to walk away. That was a change. But I'm committed and prayerfully I'll be given the strength to continue on and to uh, leave no stone unturned and to develop growth fund opportunities for us. At some point, remember I've said that there's a critical mass. And what that means is our economy our nation will keep growing in spite of anything that we do, in spite of anything we do, that there's so much momentum, there's so much energy and synergy developed that our nation will continue to grow and advance and catch up with the times because of our daily buying habits, because of our decisions, because of how prayerful we are, because of how supportive we are of one another, because we reach out and give a hand up or a leg up versus a handout will teach you to fish for many years to come versus giving you one meal. And that's really a, a can of worms. If somebody wishes to discuss that, you can reach out to me, send me an email, contact my office. But uh, that's where uh, we don't add to the nation. That's where our creator multiplies to our nation because we honor him and that we look to him for everything. So I appreciate, I've gone from talking to preaching now, but I uh, appreciate it. So ladies and gentlemen, we have Arvin Mitchell up here next year. He's gonna bring us up to speed on what our census 2020 looks like. The numbers are prayerfully are, are enhanced. Uh, hopefully we're above 20% now. Um, and uh, we just need more of you to respond. We need more of you to uh, stand and be counted. So ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Arvin Mitchell and uh, Vice President signing off here for uh, this time. Uh, we look forward to the next time that we meet again. Yeah, no, oh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Vice President. Although President Oshland, I don't it's a little straight on this because we have to be at rock point at one o'clock for a few distribution. I don't in the A, I could all about this. 2020 cents, and September 30th, uh, we only have 15 days in the president So within the next 15 days, yeah, within the next 15 days, we're going to be at a lot of location. Within the next 15 days, the DJ will be at Rock Point, 1 o'clock. On the Round Rock, at 3 o'clock. On the Kajika, at 5 o'clock. A food distribution up. On the Kayenta, the census worker will be at the Navajo Shopping Center. On the inscription house, it's been done by the state. Uh, to a one o'clock. So those are the areas that we'll be at uh, today. Uh, those count a uh, to the city. 
Ich glaube, ja, Food Distribution Band, die kriegt auch noch so, wo wir da, da Fairgrounds so lesen kann. Aber in den Well, so, ich glaube, Food Distribution Band, die kriegt auch noch. Ich glaube, ich nicht so alle da lesen. Aber auf Thursday, go, ich bin Lee. Chinli agency, the Kayo not in the Adobinag, okay, hold not in the Adon Rad and Nagi, Anna Hado, the Chin Chinli Navo Shopping Center, Bash's Big Hall in the parking lot, Ishi Ajdo, the Ado Saturday, go, yeah, will be in Shipra, Navo Shopping Center, parking lot, Northern Agency, the Kayo not in the Ado Friday, go, top mini farms, mini farms, it will be at the Chapter House. Saturday, a uh, flowing waters, a not, not flowing waters, uh, northern edge, uh, upper fruitland, a don't need a present at the casino parking lot. Saturday, and down fire rock, the oh, you know, I has me, I don't in yan so on us knee, I don't that I told that the naggy so a bad that a year. Uncle Ajke, not any year, and the northern agency, Nago, eastern agency, Jedaya. A northern exercise at the next week on Mondays, yeah. Mondays, Mondays from next week all the way to um, the 28th, yeah. Every Monday will be a pinya out on the crown point, only so the 21st and the 28th will be at uh, Pinyon and crown point. Other Tuesday, the 22nd, a e, e, uh, will be at Kayenta. Other Wednesday, go e, a uh, will be at Tuba City. Other Thursday, go e, Chin Lee. Friday, go e, uh, will be at Shiprock. Other what the Saturday, e, uh, on the September 26th, we'll be at Twin, Twin Arrows. Twin Arrows, so let's see if you add a year, you don't know, other uh, uh the casinos get yeah, their they're sponsored by gaming enterprise any cotton that's a uh j uh but in the other and yeah self-response yeah i need not a uh consultant as of sunday in 19.5 they are in the time i eat la other and yeah there's 16 them that are over 20 percent that are over 20 percent Adonda by internet, that's on a eat like a fourteen four point two per cent. Adonna top mail, naeat like it, or then that's obviously in the fifteen point three per cent. So there's a lot more people that are mailing it back or are, are, are using the telephone. I know there's four ways to respond, yeah. Hey, to get in the look at it and never be with that. Hey, not so spectate, Nito. Hey, hey, yeah, I talk at the leho internet to get on night. A twenty twenty census dot go. A uh, uh, you you log on to that uh, to that to the, to that website. Twenty twenty census dot go. I don't get that. I think it. I don't end up not on how they change. It's on eight four four three three zero twenty twenty. A hot eye not on base pay now. I don't know. I not scary. Not on the streets and so on. It's not on the street. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't. Operation non response follow up, but no, yeah, are the numerators and that any that can answer. I don't, yeah, are the same, yeah, but that was late on the day, the September 30th. I don't, uh, are the Kagi, I thought, don't know, Rago, a, a, a notice of visit, you know, a, 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 Ero da phone da nat ape in toch kil kota ya don hital kat nane sen da don ade adon da alts iso steto del kodo adon da ni ya ban ban ha sna ya dego e ya na betra e ya ta ho tra di kra most of the agency ado food distribution ban da te ho ado at the three uh casinos that gave me uh enterprises because on the on saturdays e e a de shin to ni ta na kha do a do ke ha da na do le ko do e ya 2020 census e ben ben ke na ben ke na sus na thank you
The virus is still here. We want to tell you to continue wearing your mask. And I think this is the new norm. And if you look at it, how seat belts were in, not only invented, but how it became law that we have to wear our seat belts. And just imagine that if this is our new norm, this could be our new norm and we're wearing our masks to work and at work. So, so continue to wash your hands, uh, continue to practice social distancing. These are all part of what we say, you know, on a weekly basis, some of us say on a daily basis, especially within the home. Our governor offices is going through this gradual reopening and we still have travel restrictions. So if you could please abide by those restrictions. We are preparing for our second wave. And we are on our fifth week in returning back to work. We are still at 25%. We are still in the orange status. We are preparing and moving to the yellow status. And at this point in time, as of our data, we have a total of 107 employees that have some had resigned and some had retired. And within our most of the divisions, uh, we are working closely with our division directors. We do have some programs that abolish some positions. We are encountering some layoffs in some of the positions. So, Part of the cultural teachings, um, you know, I'm in this office by myself, so let me see if you all can hear me clearly. And our cultural teaching starts with our home environment. The <laughs> Ado 
Nihikonoto <laughs> Be part of the solution, Hishne. A koto an hin here or ito an hin hin hat a hot a dole hot a bi rata niniki jo e an hin hansela koto such a nudgel what o had nahojin shah e e do sato engel what will yet a e o shakrashit e he o sahasla jo hot e he at a din Hashin Sabati Koton Handa Nishito Ado da Isuno Sign Ikehen Hitin Nidole. The Hashin Sukomas will yeni de no ketla. The A Koto Division a Human Resource Ado um Bakata Il Yado di um Division a Human Resource and Dad Nishi Bicham Hotalia. A Kotla um Ba Nasha Kon A D um water bottle la auto ppe that beats in the auto lunch bag on here on what are you on that he goes auto up to the top it does some auto pen that auto hand sanitizer auto mask auto dean lay um auto that is custard as the chair don't lay atm the danger or deep epic and that's he thought sappy yet I don't be bent as the body are quite a stand hot up and as the body does not be yet. I don't think is the CP yet. A quote, a late ah, shut on shadowed after no sanity, cut on his exchange at the neck at your bear hash net. Harlan his a yard at the schneid on his that a snake. The division of human resource and the a dot se big on that she took horse nay, Satan Hitcher a day sleep. A quaddy halak a day shne. Jodik a chit conco cotto, and Satish abbage on her nana slago. A do cojet naho el kiddo, shehiki naho el kiddo. A do coache she deal that hold nay, Satish on her doll's knee. A dot se be on that hold nay. A shit on hold nay, ki. Adenepizajishitanhatosi. <laughs> Adon a pesh behen a beh wind na ito peshes for dealne. Ado a di kodon chet um beha si ito di chokotishli. Ot ashi um o yo um to ya at e honitsen ya ya at e to hashin soko eskitil zaniki et ashik edo shidene. A kodik at 
ชิดสมหาสีตออาดอชินคอเตดีเปชเบเนเปนคิดคอเตชเนอาดอเอดออาดเนกเอจเบเฮเตชเนมิคิดนิปตาฮอสอาอัลตอนิฮิซาจิเ
been tested up positive. Also around a little bit over a thousand individuals that are between 10 to 19 years old as well. But you can see that the majority of the cases that are, te are individuals testing positive are now between the ages 20 and um, 59. So you hear, you see a little bit over 14, 16% in those age categories. And also you have individuals, um, 3% or even 5% for those that are older at 70 years of age and older. But what you tend to see is that you have a higher percentage. So to date, I mean, you're looking at about over 900 individuals that had tested positive for COVID-19 and about 200 of those individuals um, older than age 70 out of the 900 cases are passing from COVID. So it's really important to reconsider and look at those numbers. And if you combine the ones that are um, over 60 years old, and now you're hitting about over 300, 300 individuals as well. And the number of combined cases over that would be probably almost 2,000 cases. And of the 2,000, you're hitting about over 300 individuals approximately that are passing from COVID. So I think we need to relook at some of these um, deaths, the fatalities among um, older individuals is quite high, even though you see a higher number of cases that are in the younger age category. And that speaks to what um, scientifically and statistically what has been shared nationally regarding how individuals um, are testing more positive that are younger, but then you have older individuals that are um, passing from COVID. So I just want to extend my condolences to the families and relatives of those that had a family member um, pass from COVID. It's very unfortunate and we're still in this pandemic. So I, I want to thank President Nez, uh, tribal leadership, vice president, and all the healthcare workers and frontline workers continuing to um, provide education and services to those that are positive and those that are not positive to stay vigilant and so it's very important when we um, stress the importance of mask wearing too. As you look at the states that um, that do have masks, as President showed this earlier, um, the Navajo Nation, Colorado, and New Mexico, we are um, wearing masks. So um, you can also see that we are definitely trending better than those that aren't, um, which is the state of Arizona and Utah. Their um, their trending is. Um, not good in Utah. You know, they they did re re they did do um, I guess experience a rebound, meaning that um, they were on a downward trajectory, but now they went up and then they went back down. So we are monitoring what we call rebounds, or um, when the cases go up and we don't want a sustained rebound, and that goes back to the reopening plan. As we are monitoring all of these public health um, orders and mandates, um, this is very one important message that we can take back is that wearing masks and, and mandating it is very um, effective in reducing the numbers and saving lives and protecting ourselves and everyone else. So just know that um, we want to ensure that um, those are the precautions that we take every day that means wearing your mask, staying at home, washing your hands, and cleaning surfaces. And as in regards to the reopening plan, the reopening um, status on the Navajo Nation web page is definitely related to um, the businesses only and non-governmental entities. So um, we are still in the moderate stage as we are still continuing a downward tra trajectory. We are still monitoring this week as a um, Labor Day impact because, as I have mentioned before, it takes two to 14 days for someone to experience symptoms. So um, we're waiting on those the end of the 14 days to make a decision on um, moving from the moderate high restriction to the moderate low restriction. So we're still in orange statuses for businesses. The school reopening um, plan is similar, but those have different um, guidelines only due to the fact that our leadership um, Bureau, of Indian, Bureau of Indian Education are all still supporting virtual learning. So their reopening statuses and guidelines may differ in relation to the businesses. 
And one thing that I'd always like to remind everyone is that after effect of a weekend or a social gathering or either um, a Labor Day event um, that had happened over a week ago where you were gathering um, with more than multiple households or other individuals. And so either you might have travel and you um, put yourself at risk by maybe not taking any precautions. And so the signs and symptoms of COVID um, is coughing, fever, um, chills, sore throat, muscle pain, shortness of breath, new loss of taste or smell. And so those are the common um, COVID-19 symptoms. And there are still individuals that are still dealing with um, pneumonia as well or other illnesses or allergies or stomach flu. But it's always very important to be um, careful for any kind of sickness that you have, either it might be COVID or non-COVID related, but you can definitely still experience some of these symptoms that we caution everyone. Also, avoiding social and family gatherings as um, some of the restrictions are still the same, but any kind of social gathering, we are still experiencing outbreaks or clusters in some of the communities. So. Um, social and family gatherings is just as another reminder, try to avoid it as much as you can uh, by continuing to give up all your social activities with family and friends is a lot to ask. So we just um, ask that you are patient um, with us in this pandemic and we are all um, very um, impatient, but we just want to remind everyone that we want to continue to keep the numbers going down and it's basically to save lives. And we consider our grandma, our grandpa, our mom, and our dad as valuable um, as members of our community and our families. And we have already experienced a number of fatalities. So we really have to um, protect ourselves. And this is the only method that we can do right now is to continue to advise individuals to stay home and avoid any gathering as much as you possibly can. And as a reminder, the disease is uh, spreads easily person to person. So just like the flu or everything else, I mean, those droplets from, the, um, from coughing or sneezing, um, those are uh, ways that the disease can spread. Family gatherings is just as unsafe as, unsafe as other social gatherings because um, you don't know. And just because you um, have an extended family member that you are comfortable with doesn't mean that you should trust all individuals, especially when it comes to COVID, because you don't know where individuals are and you don't know where they've been. You don't know when they were exposed or if they are asymptomatic, because that's the worst part of this disease is asymptomatic individuals have shown to be um, those that can easily spread um, from person to person. The safest way to gather is virtually. Also, those with underlying health conditions should avoid gatherings as much as possible. Um, so I just want to talk about um, what kind of gatherings increases your risk for COVID-19. So if you are um, in, if you are gathering indoor, of course, um, that's a very high risk situation because you're in an, an enclosed um, area as well. And so once you're in an enclosed area, you definitely... Um, are more um, risking yourself if you invite other individuals that come to your household. Also, um, not wearing your mask as well. Also, inviting multiple individuals as well to your household um, as well that should be avoided because you don't know. So, limiting um, to household members is very important. Also, sharing food at, um, as well. If you're sharing food in your, at your gathering, that also increases your risk of exposure. In addition, your duration of gathering is also very important. Um, if you are gathering like a birthday drive through gathering, which many of families have done before, which is probably the safest route, but if you are gathering for a day or for six hours, um, for eight hours in an enclosed area, especially it's getting cold right now too. So there are probably limited um, time periods now where you can gather. But if you are gathering, the duration really matters. Um, if you've exposed yourself to individuals for a long period of time, especially if individuals are not wearing a mask. Other areas is also the one using one towel, just as an example, um, if you're using one towel as well, 
um, in your restroom. Um, that also is likely not recommended. So try to use paper towel or other ways. And then also about work gatherings, Sean, thank you for asking that question regarding work gatherings. Um, that should not be done as well. I mean, work gatherings is just as um, uh, just as dangerous as well, like any kind of social gathering, any gathering of more than five people is probably not advised. Um, and when in the closed area, um, there are conference rooms that um, can accommodate your six feet distancing. So you might have the ability to move, um, have more than five individuals, depending on your size of your conference room and to see if six feet distancing can be established. But any work gathering, um, celebrations that regard that's related to sharing food and also um, is very not recommended. But ways to gather safely, you can virtually meet, you can um, have a family social group online. You can also mail letters and letters and pictures as well. Um, you also can have a family online box of some sort like Google Drive, um, Box, Dropbox, um, any other photo album ways of sharing pictures and sharing information. Also playing online games um, are ways for children to still connect as well. So um, just as a reminder, you can continue to do that. Um, COVID-19, um, there are ways to determine when to be safe around others. Um, if you have been at a gathering and you test that positive, um, you would have to at least um, stay home for 10 days since the symptoms first appeared. Also at least 24 hours since last fever without use of fever reducing medication and any symptoms have approved, improved. And if you are um, we're in a gathering and you test it positive and you have no symptoms. Um, you would need to be um, 10 days have passed since your test and also you continue to have no symptoms as well. And when to determine if you are a close contact is based on your um, if you have tested for COVID-19 or not. Um, if you're around someone that's 15 minutes or longer and less than six feet or three feet. I guess that would be um, considered a close contact and it's also important to quarantine for 14 days as well. And also with the traditional ceremonies, I think it's um, also important to note that um, there are a lot of precautions that we've asked you guys to still do around traditional ceremonies and sweat lodges. Those include recommending remote um, prayers and also no large gatherings, bringing your own water, no sharing of objects, um, preparing your own supply of medicine um, and herbs and pollen, disinfect regularly, and also um, staying at outdoors as much as possible, but also not bringing kids as well, and also washing your hands as, as often as possible, and, and eating me meals while seated more than six feet away. Similarly, for the sweat lodge, it's the same recommendation. Um, but we recommend one person and in a sweat lodge at a time of board sharing items and all of those to make sure that you remove and hang any fabric door or coverings in direct sunlight. Also wait until 24 hours before we re reuse and also bring your own towel and wear a fa face mask at any time for these type of gatherings. Also, when you're out in the census, um, also as a reminder, just to um safely um complete your census if a census worker comes over wear a mask maintain six feet distance also avoid handshakes and avoid tearing items and if you do disinfect immediately clean any items um that you use um to complete the questionnaire and wash your hands after completing any um, documents as well so there are ways to safely interact with people when they come and census is one important factor also disinfectant safety and as a reminder that we should not ingest or drink any kind of bleach Lysol or either um, some sort of other cleaning chemical to treat COVID-19. So read the label. Um, do not use hand sanitizer that contains methanol as it is toxic to your skin and also if you ingest it. And also um, store chemicals out of reach or children as well and disinfect um, our are poisonous, disinfectant are poisonous and can cause serious harm or even death if you are, if swallowed or injected as well. Also, when um, you're looking at grief or discussing grief among um, just in general, I think it's very important to 
think about what we've gone through, I always consider our nation as still healing. Um, we are still healing in this process post, um, we're not even at post COVID, we're still in COVID. So I think there's um, some messages that we still want to share that if you're experiencing any kind of grief, you can get help. You can practice self care, um, give yourself time to heal, reach out to family members, take care of your body. And by taking deep breaths, stretching or meditating, you can call the Navajo Regional Behavioral Center at 505-368-1438 and 505-368-1467. Um, they also have a helpline on weekends at all. So just as a reminder, I think it's always important to um, take on those kinds of um, opportunities for your family members that can also receive help and get the help that they need. So I just want to thank all the listeners today and um, want to just um, remind everyone to continue to take the precautions that they need and also the, um, the precautions and also safety messaging as well um, that we're continuing to do. We hopefully will have a KTNN um, forum this week, but um, we'll see if you can dial in the evening on Thursday. We'll have some announcements on on the Facebook for the Navajo Department of Health and also the Office of the President and Vice President's Office as well. And see if you're able to tune in and listen to a lot of the updates that can be offered to our elders as well. So I just want to thank you and... I would like to hand my time back over to Mr. Leslie, but I want to check if um, Dodie is available to be the presenter. I am not sure about the response here, Eli. You're the last one, Dr. Good. Jim. Oh, okay. Well, thank oh, you. There oh, there's Ms. Ghani. Eli, do you want Ms. Gawney to still talk? Hey, Dr. Jim. Okay, you're on. Ms. Gawney is with Dodie, and um, you're up. Thank you very much, everyone. Pat Gawney, Department of Diné Education, A. Banashnish. Acting Superintendent Aishananish. Uh, thank you, everyone on the call, uh, Mr. President, uh, Vice President Leiser, uh, colleagues from uh, the divisions uh, of Navajo Nation, and then everyone else on call. Thank you very much for uh, having me uh, this afternoon. I will be providing information in terms of updates on the uh, activities related to uh, school reopening. Uh, so, uh, without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and uh, start sharing. Um, if I have the ability to share um, a document online. So, uh, in uh, as early as um, uh, May, uh, the work here at Doty uh, began uh, with a work group. Uh, to focus on providing technical assistance to our schools uh, for their reopening. Uh, that work has continued through the summer months uh, and the early part of August, we've had a number of schools resume. Uh, and those schools resumed in an online uh, virtual or distance learning format. And that is based on information uh, that we uh, listen to. Uh, the individual who just finished uh, giving information, uh, Dr. Jill Jim, and her department has been absolutely influential uh, in our decision making to our uh, governing bodies uh, in regard to uh, school reopening. And when we at Doty uh, surveyed our parents uh, in, in early June, uh, a great number of the parents uh, voted uh, to request an online learning format. Uh, and uh, that information was uh, shared uh, with uh, Office of the President, uh, in addition to Navajo Nation Board of Education. 
As a result, we have had a couple of approved resolutions that went through uh, Board of Education. Uh, the last one and most current one uh, issued on uh, early September uh, speaks directly to uh, schools entertaining uh, no face-to-face -face format of instruction. And the purpose for that is the individual who just uh, provided us the information on the local health data. Uh, that information is monitored on a weekly basis. And uh, we continue to be in a substantial risk category. Uh, Dr. Jim also mentioned that schools are not considered uh, as part of the business reopening gating criteria, as she shared. We at Doty continue to uh, finalize uh, information and language to add to our school's gating criteria. Uh, the difference there is that uh, having students resume uh, in a face-to-face -face format, whether that is beginning with a hybrid model, uh, it really uh, is a situation uh, that would include congregation of a number of individuals in enclosed space, uh, for instance, in classrooms or other instructional areas. And we want to remain cognizant of making sure that we have safety at forefront of our planning. And on the basis that we continue to be in a substantial risk category as a Navajo nation, uh, we want to protect our communities, as was spoken to by uh, my predecessors uh, in presenters today. Uh, that is our chief concern, uh, is to slow the rate of transmission of COVID-19. And so uh, we follow that same ideal from Doty. Uh, and, and thereby, we have uh, urged uh, Navajo Nation Board of Education members to entertain uh, the resolution that supports online learning for the duration of the first full uh, semester of school. So what that means is that it will take us through uh, the month of December 2020, urging schools to remain online. Now, now, we realize at Doty that creates a number of challenges for our schools uh, related to internet connection. Uh, we have weekly check-ins with our school leaders across the three states where our schools are located, Arizona, New Mexico, and Utah. And we continue to advocate uh, for CARES Act funding uh, where we want to impact uh, some development for infrastructure building uh, at the Navajo Nation level. There have been questions from the uh, public in relation to uh, how Doty is supporting schools and parents directly uh, with internet connection, uh, whether that is through hotspot devices or laptops uh, devices that students will utilize uh, for gaining access to uh, online learning. We continue to support our schools to learn about their CARES Act funding, and there have been multiple types that have been distributed to date to all of the schools here on Navajo Nation. And we encourage our school leaders to appropriate allocating those funds locally uh, to uh, address the areas of need and to create strategies that will allow them to get their students online uh, for learning purposes in the most expeditious way. Uh, some of the things that schools are exercising include the purchase of individual devices for their students, even though that they have multiple uh, siblings that might be in a, in a household, all students are afforded their own individual device in addition to a hotspot pad uh, so that each student is able to gain access to their instruction uh, because some of the schools 
uh, are varying times that uh, students are online. Uh, so we continue to monitor uh, and solicit information from our school leaders uh, on the feedback of the success uh, and challenges of getting students online. And I spoke about uh, the CARES Act uh, at our level. DOTI has submitted a proposal to uh, legislation uh, to be considered for uh, infrastructure building. We realize that Navajo Nation is in a great digital divide situation. And this really is impeding our ability to get students online, in addition to uh, availing teledoc services. Uh, as you know, uh, hospitals here on Navajo Nation are minimizing uh, the flow of traffic and really targeting and, and having a selection of who uh, is accessing medical services through walk on a walk-in basis. And so the alternative to that is teledoc services. That is having the ability to uh, have people log on and visit with a doctor and get their uh, medical needs addressed. The other, of course, is therapeutic services that could uh, be possible for students. Uh, speech therapy uh, through uh, virtual means. And then also our workforce here on Navajo Nation, inclusive of teachers and school administrators, as we have public health orders in place that help uh, guide our uh, movement here on Navajo Nation uh, for our own safety in our communities, uh, we also want to uh, be sure that our uh, workforce have access to, for telecommute purposes. And so there are those great challenges that we are aware of. And for that reason, uh, we are asking for um, a bit of CARES Act funding uh, so that the Navajo Nation can move forth with building the infrastructure uh, so that we can have these services uh, be tapped into uh, by various facets, uh, whether they are students, uh, parents supporting their children's learning, uh, patients who ha have underlying conditions uh, who need to stay uh, safely at home but still have access to medical uh, services in addition to the greater workforce here on Navajo Nation. And so uh, the other uh, challenges that we uh, uh, have become aware of as we have been in an online learning uh, situation for a couple of months at least now. And they include uh, information uh, and concerns related to um, the, the jurisdictional matters of schools. We here at Department of Diné Education monitor schools and have the oversight uh, with monitoring for schools' compliance with federal, state, and tribal regulations. And we do not have direct jurisdiction, and we don't have direct decision-making over local schools across Navajo Nation. And at this point in juncture, uh, as the schools want uh, to exercise their authority, uh, to broaden services beyond virtual means. Uh, that's creating some opportunities for us to uh, gather back at the table to talk about uh, the jurisdiction of Navajo Nation uh, over schools who reside here uh, within the geographical boundaries of the Navajo Nation. So we are working with Arizona Department of Education uh, and some superintendents uh, uh, from uh, Arizona Department of Education, and then also uh, eliciting uh, the input from county superintendents as well, as we work together to flush out uh, some details as to how we can continue to positively work together uh, to reach a mutual understanding uh, to meet student needs. And so those conversations are underway with Arizona Department of Education. And then as of this morning, we also started that conversation with New Mexico uh, Public Education Department as well.
Uh, so these new uh, th these conversations actually are not brand new. Uh, as we continue to navigate online learning and as new issues come about, that is resulting us uh, in, in uh, joining back at the table and continue to forge forth uh, so that we can uh, uh, reach those mutual understandings and, and create alternatives uh, for our students. I mentioned that Navajo Board of Education has an approved resolution in place for online learning for the entire uh, first semester. Uh, we soon will be uh, reaching out to our school uh, leadership uh, comprised of principals within tribal control schools or BIE operated schools. In addition to superintendents and principals of uh, public school systems as well, uh, we want to be able to check in uh, to see uh, about how they are meeting some needs of uh, special populations of students as well. We have become aware uh, at DOTI uh, in regard to students who are most vulnerable and they are the subgroups of students with disabilities. In some instances, students would require uh, a service type uh, that might not lend itself very well to be addressed uh, in an online format. So we're aware of that. In addition to students that we also call English language learners as well. And there are certain types of services uh, for English language learners, including uh, testing for identification, in addition to retesting uh, to see about the proficiency levels of students one year out after placement in an English language uh, program. So we are becoming aware of some of these issues and the school's needs to address these uh, in, in a format uh, other than a, a virtual uh, situation. And so as they are happening, we are uh, rethinking uh, of ways that we may need to uh, revisit some issues uh, so that we can uh, have alternatives available. And so those are some types of new developments that are happening now. Uh, and if we are to remain online for the remainder of uh, the, the first semester, as is articulated in the approved uh, resolution here, uh, we're trying to figure ways, how else can we meet the needs of these students that the districts are identifying uh, and uh, we certainly are appreciative of your school leaders within your local communities uh, who are very passionate about meeting the needs of our students. Uh, and we want to be able to uh, have those uh, needs met uh, right away. And so those are some activities that we are in process with from uh, Department of Diné Education. I also want to speak to uh, a most recent uh, parent survey uh, that was also conducted. This survey ran for at least a couple of weeks. We are utilizing uh, Department of Diné Education's Facebook page uh, to uh, solicit as many uh, input from our families uh, as input is very uh, instrumental in our decision making. We want to be able to hear and get feedback so that we have a position of advocacy from our end. And so this September 2020 parent survey ran for two weeks uh, and we have asked parents uh, in regard to their experience with internet service and online learning uh, to date. 52% of the parents responded by saying that their experience has been fair. 32% say that they have had poor experience, with 16% indicating that they have had excellent experience with internet service and lear online learning uh, for their students. And we asked about the three uh, top challenges uh, currently being experienced with regard to the student school and technology support. So this is really asking uh, the level of <clears throat> communication and assistance that families are receiving from the schools and uh, to the families. Uh, and number one being uh, poor internet service at the residence of our families was a chief concern. 
Uh, in addition to pricing of the data plans available uh, to families for internet connection. And finally, lack of technical assistance for students, parents, or guardians uh, in their relationships with their local schools. We also ask the parents to identify at least three ways uh, that schools can improve their technical assistance uh, with their decision uh, in maintaining online distance learning. And the first one was uh, parents please uh, to provide Wi-Fi or hotspot to every household. Number two being an establishment of an alternative plan for any future IT outages or failures. And number three, uh, creating a district or school IT call center for, uh, for all IT related questions. 26% of the parents and guardians did not have a reliable transportation uh, so that they have the means to pick up packages. And these could be like learning packages or even having the ability to visit IT support centers at the school or going to a parking for free Wi-Fi uh, connection hotspots or conducting other school related responsibilities. And so as we continue to get feedback, uh, we work together here to uh, uh, position ourselves with uh, the next technical support to our schools. And so uh, I have mentioned before in town hall conversations that we look to you uh, for your feedback. Uh, I was pretty surprised to see that we have had very nominal uh, response rate to the parent survey that ran for the two week time frame. We only had 426 parents respond. And it doesn't matter the type of school uh, you have your children in, we are really wanting to find out the challenges and needs out there for uh, any online learning uh, related to families living here on Navajo Nation. And so please, uh, as we unveil and push out surveys, uh, we do take your input into account. And I heavily encourage you to uh, give us that response so that we can be of assistance in the best way possible. A hea kudosha naho a igishik a shit in the she pat gani in the shiedo, a sitnajini nishido, a shin bashishin, kachini dasha chedo, tudichini dasha nalle, ado tech a johol ye de a ya a yisi nasha. D kudo e a ya department of the net education. O as isiko nat an atan nahan net do o shi a tha of a needs in nan nish nat iigi. Online learning Ado e ya kodot abanil anagi et ego e ya na idil kit surveys in daily e. Ado ada ye etan na hal na egi pik eho e kodo professional development e. Nigo e ya kwaege a banaho a zoom ye snedi kwaege laptop kot abi ye chilchen yaj da ostrage et a. O kot a e ya a ishil ish jane in nail e. Ada mo o lashbik e. A call a con such a whole Jishin Lingo, a ya, a de old ultra anas nilgo, a a principal school reopening plan is Ninigi, yin dash nish. Nishe a kodo, a ya nishit yahanahas nildo, a ya be in the neat e. A de kode ilse, dodi do, a guidance document for a roadmap to reopening schools will yego e hatelia. A co a big echo a a ya had the dog kneeled on dog ass a a ya bene ya feedback ilia do a codo nals was on bed need nito a dish chido yes congo a hot abeta menda and the stole a con la a ya a de a abetra naho a ke a dan hitos kid a ha le eight ego a ya di il chiniaja ostra egi Nahabe not eh, that of Nigo a ya coche, a hot ana, a dicky ya hinde, a call, and Kikodo a ya, 
آنلی اول خط ناز نل آدنات آنیش چین ده هلون ای اول خط آب به هز آنیه دیل نیش آج ایسی خجوع نیکنات آب کن داشت نش آدودی با اول خط دان لینیگی خجوع آج آب نایده که دیل چنیا جو اول خطیگی اخود آد ای یا ایسی خجوع یا آد ای کو ای هزن شک ای داشت دن نه خال این یعنی که ای کدوم دو اول خ آد اس نلیگی دو آد نی داد دو ای آد اخود آن خال چنیا جو با اخونیت زنده نیکنات آنی دان لینیگی ای یا آج ایسی اخود آی ناز نش اکنون خدوا خدوا ای یاد او خجوان اما دو جه نبتوس کت خی نزن آدو آجیگی با به این نسن خود آب آلتشنه یا یا خان زنیگی خود ایگو به با آسله ایا دی نیگو ای خدایی که زادیت خود آ آدم آنلاس خود آ پرنسپلز دان زنیگی به اصلاح نیتله خودیلتشنه ها دایست خدا کن زخال جشتی ایا دی اینترنت کانکشن خد نیگی اینگیش نیکس با نیکس به هز زندی زیه ند و خجوع بذیل ده اینترنت کانکشن اخو آجی کی ای یا دی خجوع نابه هو نیشن اخود ایگو ات نیستش که کد دست و لحیگی آج بخ اخد کیرز اگ فندینگ و لحیگی اخود آبی سبچ داد آنها گی نیست شد و اخود آبی نیت این دو بسایی نیکه گو ای اخود خالا ای ای یا دکویگوشی اخود ایگو به نه آنش ناز نشین لنجی خود آق خود دوست آه و دون دهست خ آدین آن دوست ادوله دید آن ناز نیگی تانس نیگی خجوع بهش کادید جا آدوین خجوع از خسته با آخون نشین که نیگی ای بک ای ناز نشین لدید آدی هو و دون داد نش اکو به اخو دون نیگی ای دی اینترنت کانکشن آج خان سگوشی ای یاد یه گپ او آدو دی از چین از خایگی از دو آ خود اه آدو دی آه نیک نیک ای دان لینیگی خان تاشین از دو آت آ خان نتهالجش اخود آگو ای از از اینگو از لان دا خاتو آج دبند ال اه اکو به هنر زنگی ات آ ای یا تل دا سرویسیز میشنه آ هوا دو خود اگو ای ای یا اینترنت کانکشن دو دی کام لپ تاپ بیگی دو کامپیوتر بیگی دا اخود آ آ ای ای یا آ از از اینیگی خود آن ناتن یان تا خاتو خود آن دبده نل این دو لحیگی به نت زن اکون به ایدی اینترنت کانکشن گیه گو بن هیچ نهادی اکو دو اول خد ای یا بنیه خود ایدا کو آدن سادیت آدو نایت کد What is Dodi doing about this خد نیگی That question is very very small whereas the greater need is to affect change Uh, for uh, building the infrastructure for internet. This is an art and that not be hope a bekeh ya hun kit ha 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 zoi ki a je u khut a kha jo u ben ye ish ta ed den il zin do leh internet connection ni ki u khut a hai ki a je ben ye eid in do u khut a a jen ki na hat a bid sa ho ad eh a do di ul tkha na zin li ki this is the question is a ad eh sa public school dan li do sa a b i e operate it آدو نانا سه ای تریبلی کنترل سکول آدو سه ای پرایویت پروکیال سکول داد لیگو خود آگو از آن ات اه اخو آج بگی دست اینگی ناد آنیش چین آب بد حالا از دو اخو آجی گی یه سین ساگو نیک نانش ایل ندیک ات ناکه دمو دوش دن داد سه یه سی اخو دی بی ای اپراتیت سکولز آجی گی آخو دز نیگو از دو بچه سواد داد آن ای دین خاص چنین که اگه نابه نیشن بس خواهد زویی تریبل سوئرنتیش نه نیکی که دو آبلا اشل نیت لنجی نخاص چنین با هم نیت زن آدای دی اول تا که اگه آن که یه با خاص نلیجی ورچوال لرنینگ دو لح آدای چنین یه جی یه آنگ خی دو تیچرز یه آنگ خی گو دی که ناس نیجی اتین د آیه گو بن کیچ نهاد ای گو هز آ اکو آجی با جایی نیل نان خواست چنی اجی اخود ایگو سا بتخت وس نهیگی با خان هست نهیگی بنن نه اخود ایگو ای یادید آخود دز نیلی کو اخود آ 
tribal sovereignty and jurisdictional matters in the most safest manner, but the it is in a virtual format right now. The Department of the Net Education survey in daily please respond to those surveys because we do take those into serious advisement uh, as we continue to advocate for helping build the infrastructure uh, for a greater and improved uh, internet connectivity for our students and then to be able to conduct uh, business uh, here on Navajo Nation. Thank you so very much for ha uh, giving me the opportunity this afternoon to share uh, the updates for the Department of Education. Thank you.